Happy month of love, guys. So we're going to do a little something different today. I love anthologies. And I love anthologies when they have episodes that deal with the gods. And so in 1985, the revival of The Twilight Zone did a Valentine's-related episode in a way that dealt with Cupid, or Eros, as we see behind me. And that episode is called E-Gods. <laughs> So as I mentioned, this is from the 1985 Twilight Zone. My personal favorite of the Twilight Zone series. I know that is a minority, but I always enjoy 80s anthologies. And so, of course, I would love the 85 Twilight Zone. So E-Gods is about Cupid. So what happens is that there's a businessman who is going about his daily life and Cupid sprinkles his love dust to make him fall in love. But the man on his busy work schedule decides to brush the love aside and keep on going. And this annoys Cupid. And so Cupid comes to his office and confronts the man how mortals of today brush love aside for personal business. And it kind of annoys the god of love. Or so. And so Cupid gets his revenge by shooting three arrows into this man's heart, as you saw in my intro video. And this causes the man later at night to do nothing but think of this lady that he met earlier in the day. And so to help alleviate his love-struck heart, he tries to hunt down Cupid. Now, when he first met Cupid in his office, Cupid mentioned that he spent time hanging out with Bacchus. And... With Cupid nowhere to be found, he looks up later the next morning who Bacchus is. And he says the Greeks called him Dionysius. His words, not mine. Which I thought was really strange because who doesn't know Dionysus? And who looks at the name Dionysus and goes Dionysius? He goes, and the Greeks call him Dionysius. Of course, it's almost like the actor has never heard of Dionysus, and he may not have. So he goes to enlist Dionysus' help to hopefully find Cupid with him. And he does. And then he finds Cupid. And Cupid tells, he tries to ask Cupid for help. And Cupid tells him that he can't help anymore because he's lovesick over the bad breakup he had with Megara, one of the Furies. And so now this man has to figure out how to get them back together so his life can be get back together as well. So as an episode itself, it's okay. I think that if you had no interest in the gods, Roman or Greek, you'd probably have no interest in this story. Because there's really nothing much more than that. Because the last 10 minutes of the episode is about trying to get Cupid hooked up with Megara again. So... Why is it Megara a fury that he is after in Night Psyche? It would have been cuter and more sticking to mythology if for some reason, after the mythology story of him falling in love and being with Psyche, she got upset, you know, like couples do over the years. And she leaves him or has a distant relationship and now he's trying to get Psyche back again. That would have been probably a better story than trying to get a fury so i have a feeling that the writers knew the names possibly didn't know really anything about mythology other than we need a cupid story and then they want a fury of all things to be the love interest of cupid i don't know what they were thinking on that end but again as the episode it was okay and so i just wanted to share this episode with you guys because i'm sure you've never heard of it before and some of you may have not even known that the Twilight Zone had a series in the 80s. Now, the Twilight Zone TV series is 100% worth checking out the 80s anthology. The original, of course, but I have a soft spot for the 1985 TV series as well. And that show is worth checking out. This episode, maybe not so much, as you can see. 
I have my preference. Um, but anyway, I just want to share some obscure thing with you guys to welcome in this month, the month of love. And I will talk to you later, guys. Bye.